Votes for women was the cry when the brave were come to die. When the end is drawing nigh, votes for women was the cry. Although this poem by Clark McAdams tried to demonstrate the importance of gender equality while focusing on the knight in shining armour narrative, all it did was cause more problems than praising for saying women from a sinking ship. And this didn't help women secure the right to vote or involve themselves in politics. Even Emmeline Pankhurst's daughter, Sylvia, shared her own opinion on the Titanic disaster, saying how there was no special chivalry aboard the Titanic. But we're getting a little bit off topic here. In this video, and in honour of International Women's Day, we will be focusing on the famous suffragette who was on board the Titanic, Eloise Bowman. Eloise and her mother, Edith, were members of the WSPU, or the Women's Social and Political Union, known in history as the Suffragettes. Eloise was a fighter who believed in many causes, mostly women's rights. She was born on the 16th of December 1899 at Tunbridge Wells. From a very young age, Eloise became fascinated with public affairs and politics, sharing the same interests as her parents. While she was still in education, she became a member of the Suffragettes, where she became a very active member. She would take part in informal activism, such as forming a group at Grilton College, giving talks and organising events for her peers with the WSPU Eastbourne District. Following the 1910 general election, the British government betrayed the suffragettes when MPs put a halt on the passing of the Constellation Bill, a bill that could have started a step towards women receiving the vote. In response, Elsie, her mother Edith and other suffragettes marched on Parliamentary Square and clashed with police in a violent revolt. The police responded with harassment towards them, including one incident where an officer gave Edith a blow to the head and screamed, die, then. This event would be later known as Black Friday, which happened on the 18th of November 1910. In April 1912, Elsie and Edith booked passage on board the RMS Titanic, travelling as first-class passengers. When they boarded the ship from Southampton on the 10th, mother and daughter were planning to visit her father's family and a family friend who was living in Ohio. They would then extend their trip across the United States and Canada. On the 14th of April, the Titanic struck an iceberg and two and a half hours later, in the early morning of the 15th, the ship would sink below the North Atlantic Ocean. There's hardly any information on what happened to the two women, but it is understood that both Elsie and Edith survived the disaster, boarding lifeboat 6 where they shared the same boat as Margaret Brown, Frederick Fleet and quartermaster Robert Hitchens who was in charge of the lifeboat. After the sinking, Elsie wrote, The silence when the engine stopped was followed by a steward knocking on our door and telling us to go on deck. This we did and were lowered into lifeboats, where we were told to get away from the liner as soon as we could in case of suction. This we did and to pull an oar amid the Atlantic in April, with icebergs floating about, is a strange experience. After arriving in New York City on the 18th, Elsie and Edith continued with their journey in British Columbia. When they returned home to the UK, Elsie returned to the suffragettes where she became a district WSPU organiser for Eastbourne, where she would publicise meetings, and at one point she would sell ice cream to raise money for the movement. During the First World War, Elsie began working for the Scottish Women's Hospitals, which was an all-female organisation that placed doctors, nurses and order lines to treat injured soldiers in war zones. 
after the war and when the women in the UK received the vote, Elsie would go on to found the Women's Guild of Empire and become the first female barrister at London's Old Bailey Courthouse. During her time at the Old Bailey, she would be involved in the infamous Henry Parlot case, where Parlot was nearly kidnapped by five men while on his journey to Liverpool for a Labour Party conference. She also became an author and was involved in setting up the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women. Elsie died in 1973.